Welcome to the Property Bible. This show was created for current property owners, people looking to purchase property, and for professionals in the industry. Hope you enjoy. Welcome back to the Property Bible. My name is Kimberly Ackerman. I'm a buyer's agent from Trelease Associates in Sydney. Today, we're going to be talking about a really interesting topic that I love and I've been really excited to discuss today is what is a tenant's agent? Now, most people struggle with knowing what a buyer's agent is. So when you get into the tenant's agent area of the property game, it becomes quite confusing. So really want to take the time to talk to a special guest of mine, Sarah L. Cordy from The Rent Fairy. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited for you to be here today. Likewise. We tend to talk a lot. We so <laughs> really do. We talk a lot. So this episode cannot go on forever. So I really <laughs> want, I know, I really want to take the time to, to go and hit on those, you know, those specific parts of what is a tenant's agent? What are the kind of things you look after? I feel like our... Our lines of work are very similar very, yes. in a lot of ways. Definitely. I guess the main difference is that that as a buyer's agent, we're helping people buying property. Mm-hmm. As a tenant's agent, you're he- helping people rent property Correct, yeah. and everything in between. Yeah. But the same end goal. Same end goal mm-hmm. for them to have a home mm-hmm. at the end of the day. Yeah. So you've been in the real estate industry for almost a decade almost now. A decade, yeah. yeah. So you had a lot to do with the property management. Yeah, side I of did things. property management for. Well, I started out as a business development manager, mm-hmm. and then I worked my way into property management. Yeah. Um, and I absolutely loved it. Mm-hmm. Loved the challenges. Every day was different. Um, and then yeah, ventured out into the into the rent fairy. Yeah. And I know from previous conversations, you sort of, you've outlined a gap in the market Mm. where you sort of thought hold on a second there's all these people that need help with this element and there's no one really around to do it or no one that specializes in it yeah there is a gap in the market between the landlords agents and tenants as property managers you look after mainly the landlord your main interest is the landlord so when you are leasing out properties you don't necessarily have a lot of time to deal with the tenants or help them in finding something else that's on the market so what we don't realize is without tenants and without looking after tenants landlords aren't getting paid so yeah. rent isn't being paid defeats but, the purpose of a investment property yeah really. exactly exactly so i um i launched the rent ferry to to kind of bridge in on that gap mm-hmm. and close it wow and you've just also just opened in brisbane i have well. i have i have a lot of inquiry in queensland there's a currently a rental crisis there yeah. um so i have one staff member jacqueline who works for me in queensland she's wonderful um mm-hmm. and she does like my open homes my searching my applications she really assists me over there um and it's yeah it's really taken off and melbourne's next fantastic yeah it's so good and and i love that that you're there to represent people because I know for myself being a buyer's agent I've probably come across three to four people in the last couple of months that have sort of said to me could you help us find rentals or we need some assistance finding rentals because they weren't quite ready to buy or the circumstances have changed or we bought for them and they need to rent now Mm -hmm. and there's so many reasons why people could use someone like you so I, I definitely know there's a lot of people really interested in everything that you have to say today, yeah. all the ins and outs of what you do, costs associated with that and how you help people mm-hmm. in the rental space. So I guess to, to sort of kick that off, one of the things that are probably we should touch on is the types of clients that you have because you've got quite a range of clients, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. So yeah. if you get a call from someone and they're needing assistance, what are some of the common types of people that you're normally helping? A lot of them are the the busy working professionals, mm-hmm. um, but a lot of them are also the families that need to downsize, the families that need to upsize, um, families that have just had kids and they need to move from a one bedroom unit to you know a house or a two bedroom unit. Mm-hmm. People who are building, people who are buying. Yeah. Um, there's there's a large a large range of people. It doesn't just stop and start at, at working professionals. Yeah. You know, there's people who can't make open homes, people who have no idea about the rental market nor how to apply for a rental property. Absolutely. So um, there is really no one type of, of person or yeah. individual that I deal with. Yeah. There's wide range. I think that it, it's a lot the same with the buyer's agent space. There's such a misconception that only people with tons of money and not enough time yeah. would hire somebody to represent them during the process. Yeah. But some of the stories you've told me that I want to talk about today, mm-hmm. it's just so interesting. And you just don't even think that there's someone in that space that can represent you. 
So I'm really glad that I found you. I'm so glad you did. (laughs) And I'm really glad that I can share this info with other people because I know there are a lot of people out there that are just struggling to get into a rental. Yeah, there Uh, there really is. Exactly. And we all just need a a home. We need a space to live, a living space. Yeah, and it's not not easy to secure a rental property. It's not. You might get knocked back 10 times and then get approved the one time, but it's just a matter of of continuing and and learning the best way to go about rental applications, Mm -hmm. um, open homes and so forth, and that's what – that's what our aim That's is at the moment, to help you. Um, one of the things which I found really interesting, which is sort of aligning what we do as with as buyers agents, is your access to additional stock that's not on the market. Yes. People love a good off market yes. when it comes to buying, but you also get off markets in the rental space. Yes. So I've worked very hard to build relationships with agents in local areas uh, throughout Sydney, Queensland, um, and we've just started with Melbourne to ensure that I can get off market opportunities for my clients. Mm-hmm. We all get the same access, real estate domain, um, you know, wherever else is posted for, for rental properties. But having off market opportunities allows my clients the first foot into the door. Um, and I have a lot of agents who will send me their properties um, of people who have just given notice to vacate. Yeah, They'll send me the property first and say, hey, Sarah, do you have any clients who need a property like this? Yeah. And then I'm able to shoot that out to my clients who may meet that criteria and get them into a property before it even hits the market. Yeah, wow. Yeah. And I think with the rental space, it's it's different in the buyer space because of the financial mm-hmm. associated with that. Yeah. So like obviously in the buyer space, the price can push up and up and up and they go to auction and then it goes for such a different amount of what the guide was. With the rental space, it's a lot more clean cut as far as this is how much rent we would like to get, would you like to pay this much money? Correct, correct. Do you have a lot of people that come to you and are like, yeah, there's rentals out there, but everything we apply for, we just seem to get knocked back? Yeah, majority of my clients will come to me and say, we've we've looked at 30 properties, we've applied for 10, we've got knocked back for all. Right. Um, And then it's just a matter of going through deconstructing their application and letting them know what needs to be done. Yeah. An interesting story that I want you to talk about Mm -hmm. was what we discussed recently where this client had been applying for this property and she'd basically got a no from the property manager and you – looked further into yeah things. so whenever my clients get an unsuccessful email which I think is why send an email pick up the phone and and, and have that Absolutely. conversation and say look we're sorry you're unsuccessful but this is a b c reasons why um this client in particular we put an application through very strong application mm-hmm. no issues whatsoever the only thing that would have pushed her back would have been competition okay. um we put her application in 24 hours later we got an email saying she was unsuccessful mm. I said okay so I looked into it logged on to her account why? <laughs> because I want to know why. Yeah. I need to know. Totally. It's not a matter of I send in an application, they say no, I go back to my client, but like, oh, no, it didn't happen today. Yeah, they should. I need yeah, to give answers. For sure. I need to know why. Because mm. if that's not being approved, then mm. either I'm doing something wrong mm. or there's something going on. So when I looked further into it, I logged on to their um, one form or their TAP account. And usually you can see if the application has been viewed. When I go in, I can see when a property manager has opened an application and I can see when it's been just sitting there. Okay. So this one in particular got the email unsuccessful. I said, that's a little bit fast and a little bit odd. No references were called. Yeah. I wasn't called. Usually Mm -hmm. the agents will call me. Okay. Um, It wasn't viewed. So I rang and I said, just want to make sure that my client's application has been processed. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, it's been processed. Wasn't approved um, based off affordability or whatever it was, which was a shock to me because her income was exceptional. Yeah. Um, I questioned again, questioned again, got passed over to about four property managers. Wow. Towards the end, I was spoke I spoke to a senior property manager mm-hmm. who advised me that the, the application was actually not processed. And wasn't they even looked at. Wasn't even looked at. Wow. No. So if you're a, a, just a normal you know, tenant who doesn't have a tenant's agent representing you, you would have got that email and said, oh, well, another one we didn't get. Yeah. But you totally. wouldn't have known to actually look and see if it has been opened, if it has been processed, mm-hmm. if your references, your work um, have been called. Yeah. So we ended up. Um, yeah, we, we got it. Up, we, yeah, but she was a little bit iffy on going ahead with of it. Of course. But um, yeah, we ended up getting it. That's fantastic. So That's push. a great story yeah. to tell people. Well, this is just That's real, just one. real things yeah. that happen, you know. And there's so many other stories that we've spoken about. <laughs> there's that plenty. There's, there's a reason why professional people are hired. And I do believe there will come a day <laughs> where buyer's agents are hired for all purchases. And I believe tenants' yeah. agents will be hired 
for all rentals because yes, a lot of people are capable of doing these things themselves, but when you have someone like yourself that does this day in, day mm-hmm. out, you know what to look for, you know where the cracks are, yeah. you know the issues that could potentially arise and you can just make the whole process very seamless. Yes, and that's, that's my my goal is to make it very seamless, very stress-free for my yeah. clients and, and the feedback is that it is just that. Yeah. You know, they don't have to chase 50 agents. Mm-hmm. They chase none. Yeah. I do all the chasing and yeah. they just speak to me. Yeah. I take away all that hard work of return calls and then not being able to answer the calls because they're at work or mm. not being able to attend an open home because they're working or, you know, the kids have got soccer or yep. they're interstate and they can't make it. Mm-hmm. I take that all away from them and I make them all feel like it doesn't matter if I have 50 clients at once, mm-hmm. every single client, I make sure that they feel like they're my only client. Yeah. So you've got multiple different packages and different, I guess, services that you provide um, tenants or renters out there looking for property. Can you take us through some of those different services? Sure. And so costs? my first package I have is search mm-hmm. where I source properties off market, on market. Um, I send my clients properties that meet their criteria. Mm-hmm. I also organize inspections for them to attend to. So midweek and Saturday inspections. Mm-hmm. That package is a couple of hundred. Yeah. Um, and Pretty then I expensive. Also, it's yeah. For for what I do, it really <laughs> is. It's it's a very good investment. Yeah. In my opinion. And there's no timeline on this. No. Well. So there is no timeline. So we work with you for all our packages up yeah. until we secure secure your property. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. And the next one. So the next one's application, which is quite popular yeah. um, because we do have a lot of clients who come through and they say, Sarah, I've got no idea what to do with my application. Mm-hmm. Is this right? We keep getting rejected. Yeah. So we offer a service where we will assess and advise on your application. And mm-hmm. Actually, let you know if there's anything that you need to add, remove, alter, mm-hmm. or work on with us. Yeah. Uh, so if there is something in your application, we'll guide you through that. That one there itself is from three fifty. Okay. Uh, just depending on how many people are in the property, how many applications you need to do. Okay. Um, and then we have search and application, which you can do together, okay. which is our most uh, uh, the most popular package. That's that the full service. Yeah, that's yeah. all. Yeah, I'd say so. If you yeah. don't, didn't add the open homes in, mm-hmm. yeah, that would be the full service. Okay. Very popular with our clients because we take away the searching from them. We take away their application process from them. Mm-hmm. And all they need to do is say, yes, Sarah, I like that property. Can we apply? Right. Wow. And then it's I do the rest. Yeah, it seems pretty simple. Yeah. That's why I say take a seat, rest your feet, yeah. and let the rent fairy find you next street. <laughs> I love that's that. What we do. It's yeah. really cute. It's really catchy. Thank you. And I think there's a lot of people out there that now that, you know, more people will be aware of this service, they're definitely, definitely going to find it helpful. Yeah. I've already spoken to multiple people about you and they're like, I wish I had used her. <laughs> I wish I had known that she existed because I hate going through the rental process. I get so many messages like that. Yeah. I get oh, I get so many messages per day saying, oh, my God, I wish, you, I wish you existed a couple of years ago or I wish I used you for my tribunal hearing because we also do um, tribunal hearings. We assist Fantastic. tenants with tenancy disputes. Wow. Um, and yeah, we get so many messages saying, where were you, you know, two years ago? Yeah. Well, but you're here now. I'm here now. <laughs> so call me. <laughs> and I think that it's a great service Thank you. for people out there. I really, I really genuinely do. At the end of all of these episodes, I always like people to give people some, some tips on the end of the segment and what they can do to kind of help themselves through the process. Obviously someone like you, they can hire, go down that path, explore that path and see if it's right for them if they are struggling. However, people, I guess, just getting out there and wanting some advice on on how to apply for these rentals and what to do to get something over the line, what would be some application tips that you could give to people? Some application tips I would give to people would be to ensure that it is up to standard before you start looking for rental properties. So mm-hmm. ensuring that your pay slips are up to date, yep. bank, st- bank statements are up to date, mm-hmm. um, or your information in regards to your work is up to date, your references, mm-hmm. make sure they know that they will receive a call. Yep. A lot of the time applications aren't approved because their references aren't able to to be contacted. Yeah. So I had one yesterday and the agent actually rang to say that the application was not approved because they couldn't get in contact with the references. Mm-hmm. And I had said, well, why didn't anybody let us know that the references weren't able to be contacted? They yeah. were made aware, but mm-hmm. obviously they, working full-time jobs, didn't answer their phone. Right. So we've gone back now, had the references call the agency and been approved for the property. Okay. So um, also when they attend open homes, to be confident, to create relationships with agents and let them know 
of their circumstances. Mm -hmm. A lot of the my Queensland inquiry are almost homeless. Mm. Um, So I push them to get out there and be confident and to call these agents and let them know what their circumstances are Mm. Um, and not to be thrown off by the amount of people that attend the open homes. You're all standing there. There's 30, 40. That's my world as well. No. Totally my world. I tell you, this is what Mm. happens. 30 or 40 people go to these open homes. Mm. Every single one is thinking, I'm not putting in an application. They're put off. There's too many people. I'm Why not going to get it. Yeah. You know how many people apply? Mm. One. Yeah. One. And that one person gets it. Totally. So don't be thrown off. Be mm. confident. Put an application in straight after the open home. Mm. Um, and, and yeah. I guess be front of mind as well. Yeah. Be front of mind. Call and call and call. call if they don't have someone like you. Because I call and call yeah. and I will call again. Yeah. And if they say no, question why Yes, as correct. well. Question why. Yeah. A lot of the time, look, the applications are, are strong, but mm-hmm. the, it is the landlord's decision at the end of the day. Yeah. But we can do our best to push the agent to push for you. Mm. I think there's a lot of stereotypes associated with rental properties and applications, mm. um, you know, men versus women looking after properties better and like yeah. all this crazy shit that goes yeah. on. You had a situation yeah. recently. Oh. So I had a situation recently where there was two applications. Mm-hmm. One was two girls and a male mm-hmm. and the other were three males. Okay. Um, the property manager came back and said that the landlord actually approved the male applicants because okay. the girls came across as a little bit immature and they were worried that they would tend to party more in the property. Okay. Um, but they were actually all professional females working night shifts, uh, working in, in hospitals, wow. um, psychologists, counsellors and, um, and so forth. So there is, I mean, a stereotype when it comes down to male and female, mm-hmm. but then there's also when it comes down to people with rental history and first-time renters. Yeah. First-time renters barely get a foot in the door. Because they don't have they the don't credit get history. At, which is horrible. Yeah. I hate that because it doesn't necessarily mean that they're not going to look after the property. We all have to start somewhere For sure. when we're renting. For sure. You know, and what these property managers and, and real estates forget is renters won't always be renters. If you make a good impression on them now, they'll come back to you as as a buyer, mm-hmm. as as someone who needs to sell. It's always returned business, mm-hmm. and they're not looking after these tenants the way they should be. Yeah. Um. And I did do a post on my Instagram where I did ask how many people get return calls on a Monday after they go through their inspections, mm-hmm. or a call to just acknowledge and say hi, from Sarah. From a rental perspective, from well, from the agent coming in and saying hi, we've received your application. We're just going to process it now. We'll be in touch. Yeah. Such a simple thing. Such a simple Just communication. Sim- just, just a call to acknowledge. Let them know yep. and then they won't call you. Mm-hmm. None. Yeah. That's I think I'm pretty crazy. sure it was like 0% that yeah. nobody ever got calls. Yeah. So I make sure um, after 10 a.m. on a Monday morning, I ring every agent we've put an application in. We did 17 applications over the weekend. Wow. For 17. one client? No, or for, for, for clients. 10 clients, we did 17. So we applied for a few. Mm-hmm. Um and we return called 17 different agents to, to yeah. make sure that we had their process, their application was being processed. Yeah. And you and I spoke about this a little bit recently. It's not everyone likes to be pushy. No. I have no issue with it. Me either. You don't have I will call you 30 times until you answer. <laughs> um, because unless, and it's not about being rude, it's just being assertive. And unless yeah. if you're not assertive and you're not pushy, you won't necessarily push yourself to the front of the crowd and say, hey, guys, I need to rent this property, Mm -hmm. do something about it. So I love that you're in this space for people to represent them, to take care of them. 100%. I will call as much as I need to to get an answer. And and I did it this morning. You know, we hadn't heard back from an agent in regards to a property and my client was stressing because she's got a week left. Um, And then I- In her current rental. In her current rental, yes. So she's got a week left in her current rental and it's it's been a bit hard for her to secure something, Mm -hmm. not in regards to a bad application, just no available properties. Yeah, wow. Um, And this one in particular, we never got a call yesterday from the agent never a return call, never return email. So I chased it this morning and I chased and I chased and I chased and um, I think we're about to get approval. Fingers crossed I leave here and we've got approval. (laughs) Okay, so with your applications, make sure your applications are clear, Um, all of your documentation is in order, make sure that your references know that they're going to be called Mm -hmm. if you've put them down on your application. Make sure that you push and push and push Get an answer. If you're not hearing from people, follow up. Follow up on the Monday after you've put your application in over the weekend if that's the case and push yourself to the front of the line because 
often it seems these cases, it's not a matter of someone's not qualified to get the property. Mm. They've just been unluckily yeah. not chosen. Yeah, that's unfortunately that is that is the truth. Yeah. It's not necessarily a bad application. It's sometimes it's too many good ones. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure we'll have many more chats Definitely. like this. <laughs> thank you for joining us this week on the Property Bible, talking about what is a tenant's agent. Hopefully it's been helpful for some people out there in the rental market who are struggling now that they know that there's a service out there available to them. Um, hopefully this has been educational for people and they can learn something from it. Look forward to the next episode of the Property Bible. So thanks for listening in.